Are you aware that the largest reservoir in the United States, Lake Mead, is drying up at an alarming rate? What just happened with Lake Mead that shocked the scientists? In this video, we will discuss the causes and effects of the drying up of Lake Mead and why it should matter to you. Stay tuned until the end to find out what we can do to address this issue and ensure the long-term sustainability of the region's water sources. The importance of Lake Mead, the largest reservoir in the United States, cannot be overstated. Created in the 1930s by the construction of the Hoover Dam, it serves as an essential water and hydroelectric power source for the southwestern United States. Millions of people in cities such as Las Vegas, Los Angeles, and Phoenix rely on it for drinking water, and the Hoover Dam generates electricity that is distributed throughout the region. Additionally, Lake Mead is a popular destination for recreational activities, such as boating, fishing, camping, and hiking, drawing over 7 million visitors annually. However, in recent years, Lake Mead has faced declining water levels due to the combination of factors, including drought, climate change, and increased water demands, raising concerns about the long-term sustainability of water resources in the region. The bathtub ring effect caused by the visible white mineral deposit that forms on the rocks and shorelines around the lake is a stark reminder of the depleting waters. As the water levels drop, minerals in the water are left behind on the exposed rock, creating a distinct wide band that scientists can use to determine how much the lake's water has dropped. Despite the negative effects of declining water levels, the creation of Lake Mead has had numerous positive impacts on the region. It has helped control flooding along the Colorado River and created a new ecosystem that provides a habitat for various fish, birds, and other wildlife. The cattails, mesquite trees, cottonwood trees, Joshua trees, creosote bushes, salt cedar, and desert willow wildflowers around the lake add to its beauty and make it a must-visit tourist attraction. The future of Lake Mead remains uncertain as the water levels continue to decrease. It is crucial that steps are taken to address the causes of declining water levels and ensure the long-term sustainability of the region's water resources. As we take a closer look at the climate crisis and the dangerous drought at Lake Mead, we must remember its importance and work towards preserving it for future generations. As of February 2023, Lake Mead's water level is still below its long-term average, currently at around 1,067 feet ASL. The lake's water levels have been under significant pressure due to ongoing drought and other factors in recent years, and the impact is beginning to be felt. Numerous factors have contributed to drying up of Lake Mead. Firstly, the lake is situated in a hot and arid region, where a significant amount of water is lost due to the evaporation each year. High temperatures and low humidity lead to rapid evaporation, causing a decline in the water level. Infiltration, where water seeps into the ground and is absorbed by surrounding soil and rock, is also an issue in arid regions such as Lake Mead and has contributed to a reduction in water levels and affected water quality. Transpiration, where plants absorb water from the soil and release it into the atmosphere through their leaves, also contributes to the water loss around Lake Mead in areas with vegetation. However, the major reasons for the drying of Lake Mead are water withdrawals, particularly for agricultural and urban use, which have led to overuse. Surrounding states have shown no mercy when it comes to water withdrawal. Arizona takes the largest amount of water from Lake Mead for irrigation, with a legal entitlement of 2.8 million acre-feet of water from the Colorado River system, of which 1.5 million acre-feet are used for agricultural irrigation. California also uses a significant amount of Colorado River water for irrigation, with an entitlement of 4.4 million acre-feet per year, of which 1.2 million acre-feet are used for agricultural purposes. Nevada uses 86,000 acre-feet per year for irrigation, while Utah's irrigation use is relatively small compared to the other states. New Mexico receives 14,000 acre-feet of water from the Colorado River system, of which approximately 3,000 acre-feet are used for irrigation. Furthermore, the population of areas dependent on the Colorado River has significantly increased over time, leading to an increased water usage. Arizona's population has grown over 1,600% 1, since 1930, while Nevada's population has grown more than 3,300% over the same period. This increased population has impacted the drying up of the Colorado River. Lake Mead, located on the Colorado River between Arizona and Nevada, has been drying up due to a combination of drought and the decrease in water flow from the Hoover Dam. The Hoover Dam was built during the Great Depression between 1931 and 1935 
and is an engineering feat that stands 726 feet tall and 1,244 feet long, made up of over 3 million cubic yards of concrete. It generates enough electricity to serve 1.3 million people and provides irrigation and drinking water to millions of people in Arizona, California, and Nevada. However, the Hoover Dam's water level has dropped significantly in recent years, currently standing at about 1,050 feet above sea level, which is more than 170 feet lower than its peak in 2000. This drop in water levels has significant implications on the region's power generation and water management. As the water level drops, the amount of hydropower generated by the dam decreases, banking electricity supplies and prices. In addition, lower water levels have also made it more difficult to manage the region's water supply, particularly during droughts and water shortages. The Colorado River, the source of the Hoover Dam, has also been experiencing challenges due to drought, overuse, and climate change. The river has experienced lower-than-average flows in the past two decades, which has led to declining water levels in its major reservoirs, including Lake Mead and Lake Powell. This has raised concerns about sustainability of water supplies in the region and has prompted efforts to increase conservation and reduce water use. As of February 2023, Lake Powell's water levels are about 33% of its full capacity, having dropped more than 140 feet since 2000, and currently at its lowest level in over 50 years. The river's lower water levels have also affected river sanctuaries, which are experiencing record low levels. The sustainability of the Colorado River's water supply is a growing concern, and action is needed to address the challenges facing the region's water management. The Colorado River is a crucial water source for millions of people and is facing a growing threat of drying up due to several factors. Climate change and overuse of water resources in invasive species are among the major contributors to the river's drying up. The construction of dams and reservoirs on the Colorado River has also led to significant water losses due to evaporation and seepage. Moreover, the river is governed by a complex set of laws, agreements, and treaties between seven U.S. states and Mexico making it difficult to manage and allocate water resources fairly and efficiently. A hundred years ago, the seven states dependent on the river came together to divide it. The river's inflow was assumed to be 20 million acre feet per year, which was wrong and had been inflated to 15 million acre feet. The wrong calculation and assumption can now be felt as the river is being used beyond its capacity, causing issues when trying to fill it up to full strength. These disputes over water rights and other legal and political issues might further complicate efforts to address the drying up of the river. The drying up of the Colorado River is a multifaceted problem that requires a coordinated and sustained effort to address. This may involve a range of strategies, from reducing water use and increasing efficiency, to providing water management and investing in new technologies and infrastructure. As the water levels of Lake Mead recedes, artifacts from the past have been uncovered, including old mining equipment, abandoned boats, and structures from the 1930s when the Hoover Dam was constructed. Paleontologists have found several fossils in the exposed areas of the lake bed, including those of extinct mammals like mammoths and camels that roamed the region during the Pleistocene Epoch. Lake Mead's receding waters have revealed the drought's impact on the region's geology, exposed rock formations and geological features like canyons, coves, and rock formations are now visible. Sadly, as the lake's water level drops, the concentration of contaminants and pollutants in the water increases, which might also have serious implications for water quality and the ecosystem. As we wrap up our discussion on the shocking decline of Lake Mead's water levels, it's clear that we need to take action to preserve this vital resource. The impacts of drought and overuse are felt not only by millions of people who rely on Lake Mead for water and electricity, but also by the ecosystem and wildlife that call it home. If you found this video informative, please consider sharing it with others and subscribing to our channel for more content like this.